Hey folks, welcome back. Well, it's been an absolutely fabulous day today. It's um, early mid-May and the skies have been crystal clear blue all day, lovely and warm. I was out on my bike this morning in my shorts and it looks like this is going to carry on this evening. So I'm going to take this opportunity to get out and do some astrophotography. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with this video. Here in the southeast of England it stays light later and later now. It won't actually be dark till around 10 o'clock and I've probably only got another maybe three weeks or so where deep sky imaging is is viable uh, after that the skies are simply going to be uh, too light for, for me to grab any faint objects w without staying up all night basically um, so yeah it's getting close to the end of deep sky astrophotography season for me so I want to make the most of it the target I'm going to pick tonight is the great globular cluster in Hercules and the reason I'm picking it is it's a, a bright target so it's easy to pick up even when the skies aren't too dark and it's perfectly placed for me at the moment sort of over there in the east and high enough up so that it, it's above some trees that I need all my targets to climb above um, it's a fab target if you're a beginner because you don't need to do very long exposures on this target. Um, you can get results out of it even with 10 second exposures. Uh, I'm going to be doing 30 second exposures. There's probably not much benefit in getting more than a minute or so exposures from this target because it's simply so bright. And basically it's a, a collection of, of stars that are lumped together in, in a little ball or in a big ball I should say there's something like half a million stars I think clumped together in the great globular cluster and it's probably certainly in the, the northern hemisphere the most impressive object of its type so um, yeah I'm just waiting for it to get dark now and look forward to get outside and uh, get my camera out Folks, well, hopefully, as you can see behind me, it's another absolutely stunning day today. Um, I was out again on my bike this morning for about 40 miles or so. Uh, I went up into the Surrey Hills, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty, and went up a hill there called Box Hill, which is a bit of a local magnet for cyclists since it got used in the 2012 Olympic road race. I feel a bit sorry for motorists, really, in the area on a on a sunny Sunday they're constantly having to kind of hop round to uh, cyclists and groups of cyclists but it was absolutely glorious so I really enjoyed it. Um, anyway back to the astrophotography and the great globular cluster in Hercules or Messier 13. Um, so why have I put on the thumbnail about alien life in, in M13? So uh, I did a little bit of research on Messier 13 and there's uh, quite an interesting little story that goes behind it. 
1974, the most powerful radio signal ever sent from Earth was fired off into space in the direction of the Great Globular Cluster, M13. It was sent from Puerto Rico. Uh, there's a big radio telescope there called the Arecibo Radio Telescope. Uh, or more pertinently, I think I should say there was a radio telescope there because I believe it, um, it collapsed into itself a couple of years ago. And this message was the brainchild of two individuals in particular. One is uh, Carl Sagan, who uh, was a famous astrophysicist and achieved worldwide fame by presenting the TV programme Cosmos in the uh, 80s, I think, or maybe 70s. And the other guy was a, a guy called Frank Drake, who I think is still alive. And Frank Drake was a member of an organisation called SETI, which I think stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And they cooked up this radio signal that could be uh, reconstructed into basically a, a simple picture. And this picture showed a stick man of a human being, uh, an image of the radio telescope that sent the, the signal. I think there was some bits in there that represented DNA and the fact that carbon is the primary constituent of life here on Earth. So anyway, this was fired off in the general direction of, uh, of M13, the Great Globular Cluster. Uh, and because the Great Globular Cluster sits 22 thousand light years away it will take 22,000 years for the signal to get there. Now Frank Drake and Carl Sagan never seriously expected to um, get an answer back from the Arecibo message they sent out. Um, for a start it would take 22,000 years for the message to get to the Great Globular Cluster and any reply would take another 22,000 years to come back. They did it more as a kind of exercise in seeing if we could send out a powerful radio message in principle. So there have been some debates about whether globular clusters would be a, a good place to, to look for extraterrestrial life. And there are sort of kind of strong arguments on either side, really. Um, but consequently, it was a bit of a surprise when in 2001, the Arecibo message was apparently answered. And it was answered by means of a, a crop circle cut into a field in Hampshire in the UK. And a crop rectangle probably be a better word for it. The crop rectangle was a very similar message to the message that was sent out and you, you can see it here um, on the screen and also the comparison with the original Arecibo message sent out to the Great Globular Cluster and you can see that um, there's a little alien person in place of the um, stick man that we used on our message and the uh, telescope that was or radio telescope that was that sent the message out the little image of that looks different and i think the arecibo reply mentions that silicon is the um major chemical of life on the planet that sent the message out now of course this kind of begs the question as to um why an alien would travel 22,000 light years to get to Earth to land in a farmer's field to um, cut a pretty pattern and then go 22,000 light years back again rather than just sending a radio message. So um, of course the whole thing was, was debunked as a hoax. So the whole thing was just a, a, a kind of interesting experiment really. Um, that got a nice little hoax answer back in 2001. But anyway, back to my little attempts on the Great Globular Cluster. 
I ended up, I took 30 second exposures, I took about 100 of them. So I ended up with a bit less than an hour's worth of, of exposure time. But this was ample for a, a, a bright target like this cluster. Um, the image came out reasonably well. I was fairly pleased with it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put that up now. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it.